<laughs> well, welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and today is May 7th, and I'm broadcasting from Stockholm, Sweden. Um, it's good that today we have a few questions, and I'm going to try to answer all three questions that we have to the best of my ability. Uh, before we begin, what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, silent meditation uh, for 10 minutes, and then we go from there. So, as most of you do know, and you've been with me from uh, the academy, uh, the best and easiest way of meditation is when it's completely effortless. Meditation is not something you do. Meditation is something that happens on its own accord. So what we do is we create the space for meditation to happen. We open the space. We become available. Meditation, again, it's not an action. It's not a task. It's not something like you're going to the gym to work out or you're going to the cinema. Meditation is something that happens naturally and it comes on its own. So what we do right now is we simply going to divert our attention from the other world that we're perceiving and we're paying attention to with our five senses. That's our connection with the world through our five senses. And we bring our attention inwards and we go beyond the five senses. We go to where that which is aware, not aware of this or that, that place which is simply aware, that place that's simply here. And everything starts from that place. That, if we're to call it something, is the I. I, I am, I am something. I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm a nurse, I'm a teacher, but not I am something, but simply I. So we bring our attention to that place. We go to the I, we go to the presence within ourselves, to the watcher, to the one who's aware. And we keep our attention over there. And it's very, very simple. If you simply turn your attention inwards, you land into that place. Just simply relax, hang out here with yourself without any agenda. Don't force anything and allow for meditation to come to you. You don't have to try to do anything. You're simply here and you're allowing.
And slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. Slowly, slowly come back. So for those of you who've been practicing, before, you can see that by bringing your attention simply to the source of yourself, to the I am, not or I, not I am this or I am that, simply if you divert your attention inwards to the watcher, the one who is aware of your thoughts, the one who is aware of your feelings, the one who is aware of your body, and the one who is aware from the outside elements, noises, temperature, whatever is happening outside. There is something, a being, an entity, which is the I, is aware of these elements. It's simply aware. It's not involved with any of it. It's simply aware of it. So when you simply bring your attention to yourself, I, I use different words for you, so you can connect to these words. You bring your attention to I am. You bring your attention, attention inwards to this place inside yourself. Then immediately you go beyond the mind because your focus is not on your thoughts anymore. You're not trying to stop your thoughts. 
You're not trying to push your emotions away. You're simply diverting your attention to the source of yourself where you notice these things. Not what you're noticing, but where it can be aware of things. And by doing that immediately, everything becomes quiet and you go into silence. And as you practice this more often, you begin to unclutch from a habit and conditioning that we all have been ingrained by throughout our lifetime. So your attention from the objects comes to the I am, yourself, and everything becomes quiet. Now we're having a question here, and uh, our friend Raphael, you said something about Kundalini. So, will you repeat your question again, please? I would like to know as much as possible about uh, Kundalini, and especially how to prevent it from making disasters. Okay, so let me see if I understand your question. You're, first of all, you're interested in, in in kundalini energy or understanding the kundalini energy and number two is your concern if you awaken the kundalini energy within yourself it doesn't turn to a disaster what what makes you think if it's awakened it will turn to a disaster first of all it have already happened uh, secondly, uh, I'm not the only one. I have been looking around, and uh, if you have um, blockades in your chakras, as I understand it, then uh, it, it will do everything to, to, to release them, these blockades. Okay, uh, so excuse me, let me stop you here. Let's just talk about you for the moment because we're just basically talking about what your experience and what you're concerned of, okay? okay. So, so your Kundalini energy is already awakened? Uh, yes. Okay, so what happens to you? Can you explain it to me? Uh, the first time, uh, it was, uh, not the usual experience because I was in the astral, so I had I had a different perspective from this than others. But uh, looking from the outside, I, I was just uh, really sh sh shaken in all directions, uh, thrown to the floor, spun around, and then I went. Right. on my bathroom and demolished my bathroom and my um, entering hall, how do you say it? Okay, all right, let me and, start. And, and, then, and then I was uh, very bloody afterwards when I regained my consciousness because I even lost my consciousness. So I don't remember even to, to doing all of this. Okay. And, and I, I could... First of all, see it was uh, not really a snake, but more of a dragon that uh, was attached to me. Uh, and secondly, afterwards, I have even f felt it uncoil and uh, recoil. Okay. So you say the first time when your Kundalini energy awakened, you were in an astral body. Uh, Yes, uh, yes, it happened simultaneously when I shifted to the astral. It happened simultaneously. I, I was okay. like teleported even. Mm. Okay, all right. So your Kundalini energy awakens, and in the same time as it awakens, you're having an astral body experience. And as this is happening, there is also an awareness. You are aware that your Kundalini energy awakened and you're aware that you're having an astral body travel, correct? 
half of it. I had no idea at the time it was the Kundalini. Right, I understand. But there was an awareness, there is an ob observing of this is happening. There was somebody observed this happen to him. Somebody yes, experienced yes. this, correct? Yes. yes. And that, that person is you. So the experience was happening to you, correct? Yes. Right. Okay. So, all right. Now pay attention to this part because this is very important. You are observing an experience you have an awareness of an energy field awakening in your body that we call it kundalini energy so there was an awareness that was aware of awakening of an energy field mm -hmm. let me ask you something is that energy right now awakening in you uh I would uh, say uh, it's the, uh, <sighs> is it is it awakening in you in the same intensity as it was awakened to you, in you before on the first time? Actually, I'm not uh, perfectly clear if you are uh, referring to m m my true self or some some other I energy. I'm asking a very simple question. I'm asking that, are you experiencing the Kundalini energy that you did last time right now? Oh, and, and not and the same. Not the same. No, no, no. no. Not the same. Not so, the same. It's, so it's not here right now? Not exactly right now, it's not. Right, so, and what is here right now? Uh, I think that it uh, opened and opened my heart chakra, so I have plenty of positive energy right now. Okay, so right now you're aware that your heart is open and a different, different state of being is happening. Yes. And then you were aware that the Kundalini energy awakened and it was very uncomfortable and it was very intense uh, actually uh, the, the first experience didn't awaken anything it was uh, a few days ago which was uh, much later that it, it uh, came back it have attempted to come back several times although i was not in the astral and uh, two days ago, it uh, opened my heart chakra. So, okay. not the first Great. time. That's wonderful. So, it did something positive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. So, again, so this is the part you want to really pay attention to. Is that Raphael, the observer, the knower, the one who is aware, the one who's here, he was here in this place when the Kundalini energy awakened and that intensity, that explosion happened. And that explosion picked you up, bumped you against the walls, whatever it happened made you bloody, whatever it was the sequence, there was an awareness, aware of this thing happening to it, which is you. You were aware that this is happening. Maybe you're not aware of every single part of it. Maybe you don't remember all of it, but you're aware that this happened to you. Yes. Right? Okay. And now you're aware that something else is happening to you. Uh Right now, something else is happening to you. You're exactly. here, right? Yes. You, you feel like your heart has opened up, and, but you're not going through that intensity and explosion that you went through a few days ago, or a week ago, or whenever it was. So right now, it's more, it's peaceful. 
your heart's open and you feel peaceful. Now, I would like you to bring your attention on your awareness and keep your attention on your awareness. Be the awareness and stay there. And then come back to me again. I'll come back to you, okay? Mm -hmm. Just stay in that place. Go bring your attention on the place that you're simply aware, but not aware of what. Simply bring your attention to that place. Stay there for five minutes and then we revisit again, okay? All right, Ros Rosalie. Uh, Shishi, can you unmute her, please? All right, Miss Rosalie, what was your question? It was um, to turn pain and a bad time over to power. Pain and back, bad time to the yeah. power. You right. see, when somebody hurt you and, and you feel really mess. Okay. You feel like, yeah. You so, really you're talking, so you're talking about emotional pain. If somebody... Yeah, and also physical pain and turn that over to power. What do you mean by power? That's make you stronger. Okay, so in other words, turning the poison into medicine, right? Yeah, more or less like that way. How to turn the poison into medicine. I know you're taking up before, but I think it's good to repeat it because many ask me. I don't know why they come on and don't ask you. Right. Okay. Okie dokie. So, everything that happens in our lives, any, any encounter that we have, uh, in any way, good, bad, whatever it is, it's a part of our spiritual growth. When your consciousness begins to expand, when you are expanding and coming out of this place, that you're no longer separated and you're connecting to the one heart you begin to see that every event which is happening in your life is a part of the totality it's a part of the grand plan so when things starts to go in a way that you get hurt there is something to learn from it and, and generally, the most important part of this is who gets hurt? Who is this person that he or her, his or her feelings are hurt? Who gets hurt? When someone does something to you, Rosalie, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. say somebody betrayed you, correct? And somebody has done something or they have insulted you. Yeah, then I will feel hurt and I feel sad. Right. So you, so you say, I am hurt, correct? Yeah. Right. So now, if you go beyond... I am hurt. If you go into this place that you're simply an observer. Yeah. If you switch your attention that I am Rosalie, I am a person, I am a character. Yeah. And I am hurt by somebody's comments. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you go back and you take your attention inwards to simply I am, but not I am totally. Uh -huh. Okay, try that right now. Take your attention back and go to the I am. Yes. Okay. Do you feel any hurt? Do you feel any pain in this place? 
No. You are saying I am, not I am someone. No. Right. Beautiful. Because only somebody, a person, can get hurt, not I am. No. But when you have uh, physical pain, right? Looking at aching you all the time, and you you need to take a painkiller to get it away. Right. Right. I mean, number one, number one is is physical pain is a part of signing up and coming into this life, coming to this dimension. Nobody has ever said that you're going to come to this dimension and it's going to be completely painless. It's a part of the deal that when you sign the contract to enter into the body, to come to this world, to this life, you agree on the terms of having a body and going through carrying a body which eventually it will get old, it will get sick, and it will die, the body. That's the part of the, the game when we enter into the 3D, the third dimension. So all human beings that they're born, they go through a curve. And this is from the time they were born, they grow, they reach their peak physically, and then after they reach their peak, they begin to decline. Physical pain is the part of the deal. And there is no way out of it. Now, whether, whether we identify with our body as this is who I am, or we lose our identification with the body. It means the body is there and the body experiences pain, but it's not personal. It's not you who are experiencing pain. It's the body that is experiencing it. That's a different scenario. That's a different deal. Yeah, but what I used to do, as I did today too, I had pain in my body and I could nearly feel I'm moving, I had pain. And then I take up and I start to paint outside. And I'm painting and I'm painting. And the pain was there. But when I was finished, I was tired and I didn't have any more pain. Great. Beautiful. So you already found a solution. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I find out that when I have pain, I start to walk. I start to do something to get something else to think about and to sit and eat painkiller. But that's not good for the body at all. So you've learned to switch your attention, to take your attention off of the pain and put your attention on something else. Yes. And as you're doing this, the pain disappears. Yes. Right. <laughs> so I have paint the whole day today. <laughs> Wonderful. And you see here, and you sit here. <laughs> I paint more with my hair. <laughs> uh -huh. Wonderful. Any other questions? Anything? Let's see. Only the person who is really, who's identified and has become someone, something, can be insulted or be hurt or be cheated. Not the one who has emerged its consciousness within the self, 
not the one who has fallen back into the I, the I am. When we start to train ourselves and bring our attention inwards and we come and we begin to look and we start to carving in, we're starting to diving inwards in this journey. And in this journey that you're going in and you're kind of denying these different things, you're rejecting, you're rejecting your feelings, you're rejecting your thoughts, that when these strong thoughts come and you say, this is not what I am, this is not who I am. And when these strong emotions, they rise, you reject them and you say, I'm not these either. And you don't buy into it. And you just keep going more inside. So you're going into, let's say, this tunnel. And you keep going. You don't stop. Different things starts to happen, but you don't stop. Maybe spiritual power starts to rise. And all of a sudden, you start to be able to manifest things or create things and heal people or do astral travel or shape shift or whatever and you don't stop at that one either you reject that you say i don't want this you keep going in you you just keep going in because you you have this conviction and you're really certain that i don't want anything that comes and goes i don't believe in anything that comes and goes whatever it is i don't want it i want that which is always here i can let go of a million different things that come and go but i want that one thing that doesn't come and go that's what i want so you keep going inside and if you stay consistent and keep going, you're going to meet yourself. You're going to see, you're going to have an encounter with the observer, the I am. And you've had a glimpse of it. And you're going to meet that one eye to eye. You're going to be staring into the eyes of that one, which simply is always here. It's not affected by what happens, but it's simply aware of everything that comes and goes. And when you encounter that, then in that moment you begin to realize that your life has really started it. It just has begun. And the quality of our lives or quality of your life begin to change. In some ways, I agree, it's very confusing and it's a tough path in some ways, tough road, because it's hard to trust or to believe that this statement is real or it's true. You know, so many people may just say, well, what about the world? What about everything's happening? What about my feelings? What about my senses? What about my creativity and my power of manifestation and my thoughts? And everything is in the world. What about these things? And in your surrounding and a lot of teachings and a lot of 
uh, scriptures, different, different uh, writings, they're supporting this. They're supporting the idea that all this thing you see is absolutely real. So in a way, it's really tough to buy it, to buy this, to buy what I'm saying. And I don't blame you. But if you at one point decide that when I go out and I get this and I get that and I do this and I do that, and whatever I'm doing, whether it's a spiritual practice or it's a new lover or it's a new object that I got or I moved to a new place, I finally moved to um, a house by the beach in Caribbean. But if you examine it, you see that you have satisfaction, you're happy, but it's short term. You're not free from worries and you're not free from your mind and you're not free from anxiety and you're not free from the fear that you may get old, you may get sick and you may get lonely or you may die. And even if you work on those things, there are many, many moments that we feel lonely. This loneliness creeps in. So you have everything you want set up and you got it there. The car, the lover, money, vacation, home, ideal job, ideal home. But you're not free from this one. This one is hunting you. And the feelings come and go and the emotions come and go. And one of the fears that do come and it always creeps in is the fear that what's going to happen to me? Where am I going to be? I'm going to be left out. Or I'm lonely. I don't have anyone in my life. Or no one understands me. Nobody really gets me. Loneliness. Tell me if you experience that. Loneliness. Not aloneness, loneliness. Nobody understands me. Nobody knows what I feel. And that is like an epidemic. It's like a disease, a worldwide disease. The fact that we live in this individual world separated and nobody really understands or knows what's going on in your head and what's going on in your heart. And especially when you're going through trouble and hardship, those are the times that you feel it the most. And you're on a spotlight and things are going down and you feel like nobody really understand what's going on with me. Nobody really can feel my feelings. And that eats, eats up through you. And we may be doing this and that and we may be, you know, having kids around us have a partner you have your dog and cat and horse and you just try to surround yourself with whatever humans or pets but ultimately at the end of the day when you're going to bed and the last moments that you're going to fall asleep and you have your sweetheart in your arms or you have your baby next to you at the very end you take yourself to bed by yourself. At the very end, in the last moments, when you're about to fall asleep, you take yourself to sleep. 
And when you wake up in the morning, the first thing is you always wake up by yourself. That's the first thing. So there is no escape from yourself. You have to face yourself. You can't escape from it. Rosalie, hold on a second. Let me finish this up. So why do we have to go through this throughout our lives? Why do we have to go to this sense of loneliness for most of our lives? Majority of human beings on the planet, they go through it. And a big number of older people, especially in the Western world, they end up being lonely. Those older people who are fortunate, maybe they have their partner or their kids around them. But now in the modern world, most older people, they end up being lonely. So what do we do about this? How do we turn this around? What can I do that I don't have to suffer from this sense of loneliness? And for that, the main reason for that is simply is because when I'm not elevated to the level of my heart opens up, to the point that I connect with the source, the source of I am. When I'm not in that place, that means I'm very busy in my mind, very much engaged in my thought process. And this engagement in my thought process keeps me in isolation, keeps me in this state of fear and separation. And until I recognize this, I realize that through whatever methods, and I begin to do the shift by shifting from the head into the heart and entering into the world of the heart. And as I come to the world of the thought heart, means my mind becomes quiet, and my heart starts to open up and I begin to feel. Now, in the beginning, as you're coming to this place, you, may, you, you are expanding and you're feeling a lot of different things. You may be hearing other people's thoughts, you may be very sensitive to noise, uh, and a lot of people get stuck in this level, in this process that the heart starts to opening up and they're becoming very, very sensitive and they go in more of an isolation because they become very uncomfortable being around other people. But you have to understand that this section is a part of the process. And sometimes you have to go to an isolation for the heart to completely open up. But Ultimately, you cannot just hide out all of your life from life and, and not connect because you become sensitive. As you're diving into your heart and the heart begin to open and expand in, in the beginning, in this expansion that is happening, I understand that that you need to protect it and naturally you don't want to be around other people and the noise loud noise loud restaurants traffic maybe big cities and things like that may be bothering you because you are getting used to being silent and you're diving into the heart but you must understand that coming to the heart as you dive into this place, you begin to feel connected to everything. When the connection is completed, the arrival, you have arrived at the heart space, 
then you tap into the one heart, one collective heart. And you begin to feel connected with everything because now you're connected to yourself. And in that connection with everything, this sense of loneliness begin, begins to disappear. It begins to go away. Because you begin to feel the presence. You begin to feel the field, the subatomic field of energy which is available and is around you. The invisible pathways, the invisible blanket that through connecting to this, you're connected to everything. And as this connection begins to happen, because the mind has become quiet, a low voltage of bliss, of a feeling of love, it starts to happen. Continuously you begin to feel the presence, the divine presence. You may not like the word divine presence, but we'll call it the feeling of bliss, the feeling of love. But this love that I'm referring to is not an emotional love. Emotional loves are different. There are waves that they come and they could be overwhelming or it could be minutes or hours of just extreme happiness or love and they come and go. This one that I'm referring to, it's constant. It will be in your life all the time. It's, its vibrations are not like this. Its vibrations are like this. But you will be continuously feeling it. You will continuously feel the presence of Her Majesty surrounding you. And through that, the realization comes that you are never lonely. That sense of loneliness begins to disappear. And it may come and go as a thought. It may just travel as a thought, but you no longer buy it because you're continuously connected to this field of oneness, to the field of love. And it must be an experiential state. This has to be something that you experience all the time. Not something that comes and goes. If it comes and goes, then it's simply an emotion. It must become permanent. Now, you are in this place, and you've reached this, and you're experiencing it permanently. Yet, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get angry. It doesn't mean that you will not experience impatience. You don't get... You don't get the experience of sadness. No, those emotions, they come and go. And they're welcome to come and go. The work is not about becoming emotionless. The work is about switching our identification from an imaginary person that you think you are to the real you. The one you think you are is not real. It's only a thought. You have to divert your attention from that one. Because the one you think you are gets hurt easily, is needy, gets angry, gets impatient, is judgmental, is lonely, 
It's got ups and downs all the time. You have to take your attention away from it. You gotta bring your attention to the source. And as you do that, you have experienced it before, we've been together. As you do that, you start touching the source, the source of I am. And we have done that, whether it's been in a workshop or here at the academy, or those of you who've been with me in Ore, because then we have time and we go into this place and then we stay in this place for a long period of time. You've been there, you know what I'm talking about. So a part of it is you have to start to recognize the difference between an emotion, emotional wave versus, versus that sense of constant bliss, which is running through you. Reject whatever you think and whatever you feel. Don't buy into your senses. Go back inside to the very source, which is aware of senses, but it's not the senses. Look for that place. And as your intention goes in that direction, the entire existence, that which is running the show, Her Majesty, will pull you more in. You don't need to worry about it. Because you've already been invited to come inside, to come and see the real you and to meet yourself. That invitation has already happened. So you don't need to worry about it. You simply do one very simple exercise practice. You incorporate this practice in your daily life. You simply bring your attention to the source, the I am. And you keep your attention there. And you forget, you get involved in the world and you go into the fear and anxiety and jealousy and upset and everything, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up. Don't go into this place of self-blame. Simply bring your attention back. And everything else is going to happen automatically. And very soon, you're going to find yourself absolutely quiet and in love. It's an inside job. And the more you touch this place within yourself, the more you experience the divine love, the more you see that you are surrounded by love. And it starts to play around you. It dances around you. It surrounds you. It's not an ego egoistic love. It's not like, oh, I am, look at me, look at me, I am love. My name is Zarathustra love, or my name is Shakti love, and pay attention to me. No, 
you don't really care if someone's paying attention to you or not paying attention to you because you're feeling the presence all the time. You're feeling the love surrounding you continuously. Somebody may come and tell you, why did you cut your hair like this? It looks horrible. Or they tell you, hey, you put on some weight and you just simply hear it and you have no, no charge against it. You're not going to get triggered by it. You're simply hearing whether it's a criticism or is a jabbing, but you're empty. This just goes through. It doesn't matter. You're feeling the presence here and there's nobody there with an identity that is hurt. Because only an ego can get hurt. If you're empty inside, then everything simply goes through you. Because you're free. It's simple. It's very simple and you don't have to make it complicated. Stay in this moment, stay here and refuse to go anywhere. Any story that starts to come from, for you of the past, everyone, anyone who wants to get you engaged in a story, refuse to go anywhere. Just stay here. Do not allow yourself to go anywhere. You simply stay here. Even your pain, your physical pain, stuff you're going through, It's coming from the past. That too is a story. Because here, this moment is fresh and brand new. And it's always fresh and brand new. Anything else you bring into it, you're bringing it from the past. So you're pollute, polluting the present moment from the past. You just stay here and you're always safe. Somebody comes and tells you a story that the world is gonna end. The world is going to end. We're all going to die. You stay here and you don't go anywhere. Here is the only safe place that exists. And here is always fresh and always new. And here is the only place that you're going to experience the divine love and your own beauty.
we're coming to the end of our time. Rosalie, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to answer your question next week. Thank you for joining me. Tomorrow I'm heading to Gothenburg and I have three events in Gothenburg. The first event is the 5D Quantum Awareness talk series that I began in Los Angeles and I'm continuing it um, both here in Stockholm and Gothenburg and other places around the world. So it's a free event. You're welcome to join me. Uh, and the day after that, which is on Thursday, I'm going to have the shamanic healing uh, circle. And then over the weekend, it's a two-day weekend of the 5D quantum awareness. And over the weekend is how do we function from a higher state of consciousness? How do we arrive at the 5D consciousness and we operate in normal world and normal life? So that's what the workshop is going to be about. Um, it's a very powerful workshop and I'm very excited about it. Um, it's pure satsang and I'm really looking forward to see how, what's gonna come out of it. Uh, so I'm, ex I'm super excited about uh, my coming trip. Um, after that, I come back to Stockholm. There is another two-hour free event. The 5D Quantum Talk Series will continue on May 16th. And then on May 18th, we have the Initiation Day. It's Initiation to the Fifth Dimension. And that's an all-day event. It's a free event. I'm inviting you all to join in. And it starts from 10 in the morning till 6 in the afternoon. And uh, it's a potluck. So we're going to bring something and share with one another. Um, it's going to be the teachings, the meditation, the activation. Then it's the initiation. And then we will celebrate. So I'm looking forward to seeing you on the 18th as well. And after that, I'm going to head to Poland, Germany, and France. And then at the end, I come back here, and then I'm having my signature retreat um, in Ore, the fifth dimensional quantum healing and awareness. This year, I made some changes to it. My good friend John Dumas is going to join us. He's one of the top um, sound vibrational healers, shamans in the world. And I love this man and I love working with him. So I'm really looking forward to the moments we're going to have together. And um, the retreat, at the retreat uh, this year, I'm going to spend more time into the 5D quantum awareness. Uh, we will be learning the, and going through the healing modality that I have taught in the past. But on this retreat, we're going to be working on this. We're going to we'll be working on our journey towards the source to land into this place and to stay in this place. So I'm excited about that as well. <laughs> so I have my two sisters here waiting. Uh, Pia and Anali are, both of them are here. You wanna say hello to everybody? Come and say hello. Come and say hello. They've been sitting together meditating. <laughs> So, say hello to everyone. Here's Anna. Hello, everyone. It's fine to see, see you all. And here's Pia up here. Come and say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> so, I'm happy, happy my two sisters are here. We're going to go have a bite to eat together. I'm sending you lots of love and light. 
And uh, I'm going to make an announcement. I'm not sure if I come back on Tuesday to Stockholm or not. So uh, I will announce the date of the next academy, either Tuesday evening or Wednesday evening. But um, we will have another academy next week. Um, I will be doing the academy as much as I can. And I try to squeeze it in between uh, um, my travel time. Sending you all lots of love and light. Namaste. Thank you.